All right, everybody, welcome back to part three of how to um, update and modernize and overhaul and lube and break in and install a decoder into the Shea. Um, today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter. I was going to kind of um, put this part into the next part, but I think it would have been too long. So this is going to be a quick one. All we're going to be doing is taking the motherboard out and wire and labeling the wires that need to go to the decoder. Um, super straightforward process this time. Again, in the last video, we replaced the gears, got it all lubed up. The first part, we lubed up the motor, broke it in, made sure it was good. So um, if, if you're just doing a DC operation, your Shea is done. You're ready to go on the layout and, and have a great time. Um, from here on, we're going to be focusing on installing a decoder and a sound system into this. Uh, I, I do use TCS Wow Sound decoders on my locomotives, and I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video. That'll be for the next one. On this one, all we're doing is prepping it for, prepping it to accept the decoder. Um, so what we're going to need is a screwdriver. Uh, I use a fine point Sharpie um, for labeling the wires, some small gauge uh, wire strippers, side cutters, and also some labeling tape that over here, I made a couple um, pieces of tape that we're going to use to label the wires. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So to get to the motherboard, what we're actually going to do is we're going to cut this motherboard out because the decoder replaces this motherboard and we need all the, the sound, all the space in here for the decoder and a better speaker and the keep alive. So all this has got to go. Um, technically, this is an NMRA plug and you could, in theory, plug in a decoder to that right there, but you, it you really eats up a lot of room for a keep alive and a, a better speaker. So I remove it all. The mother, the uh, the decoder will do everything that this motherboard does, so it's redundant to have both. So we need the space, so it's got to go. So the first thing you could do is there's a screw at the back of the tender, uh, back in there. So you got to take that out. It'd start with the back one and take that screw all the way out. It's a little bit of a long screw, and sometimes it's easier to to take the. Uh, the, the, the trucks off but it's manageable so that's the first screw you take out and then the second screws actually don't come out um, they are kind of blocked by these piping and this bracket right here um, and this one as well over here so what I do is I start with one and give it like two or three two or three turns and then go back to the other side and give it two or three turns so that the um, the tender can start lifting off without pushing the screws down and ruining this detail. So just give give each one a couple turns, going back and forth, and the screws actually stay in place, and that just lets you remove the uh, the tender. So the next thing we're gonna do is take these screws off. Uh, actually, just, mine only has one for some reason, but there should be three. It should be one here, here, and here. Um, so you, you take these two screws out and then this third one right here. Take that one out and you can discard these screws or put them in your scrap pile or whatever, because we're not gonna need them now. Do keep, do keep track of that first screw from the tender. We are gonna need that later, but put it to the side for now. So, all right, so on the bottom here, um, what we're going to do is label all these wires. Um, so if you look in right here, there's in right, in left, and each one of those has two pads. And then there's positive and there's a positive right there. And it does say LED right here, but it's kind of blocked off. But that is an LED or LED, yeah, LED. So that's the positive and the negative right there of the LED for the headlight. And this, uh, there's a little M right there. You can't quite see it probably. It's blocking this, this um, capacitor is blocking it. But underneath there, you can see that it says an M. So that's the motor, motor positive and negative. It doesn't really matter for the sake of installing a decoder. It doesn't matter which is positive and which is negative for the motor. Um, because we in in the CVs, if the if the engine's running backwards, you can just change the CV and it'll make the the engine run in the correct direction. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna work our way around. So we'll start with the positive. Cut one of these cut these off one at a time. So cutting the positive, and when you cut the positive off, you're gonna take take one of your little uh, 
flags you did up earlier. Put it on. This is why I use the fine tip Sharpie and we're just going to put a positive on that. Then we're going to cut the negative. Actually what I'm going to do for the sake of time in the next video is I'm also going to strip these wires so that we're ready to install the decoder that are already stripped. When you strip wires for these, you want to strip a good quarter inch. Give yourself a lot more than you think you're going to need. Um, I found that it really gives you a better connection and we'll go into how, not, not how to solder. If you're watching this video, I assume you know how to solder, but I'm going to go over how I solder my connections. It might be a little bit different than what you've seen before. And so for the way I solder my connections, I, I do use a, a good quarter inch there. So that was a negative. So we're going to take this little negative flag, put that on there. Label it negative, and then working our way around. This is motor one and motor two, and you know I guess there is a plus right there. So this one technically is probably the plus, but like I said, this, this is the motor, and for our, the sake of our needs, it doesn't matter which is which. So what you could do in theory is cut both of these and tape them together. I'm going to uh, strip these. That's one, this is two, so those are ready to go on the motor, or in the decoder. We're going to tape both these leads together, and we're going to call this MTR. MTR, so you know that's the motor. And then these last two, you have to be careful because you have one set of wires here and another set of wires here. And this is one of these is from the front truck and one of these is from the rear truck. So you have left and right from both front and rear trucks. So one of these leads goes to the positive and one of these leads goes to the negative. So you can't just cut these two these two wires on this one wire and call that positive and the other one negative because one goes to each. So when you do it, you really do have to pay attention to here. So you cut them from the same pads. So that's one, two, they're right next to each other. That's one, two. So there's one of those. And you'll see we're taking one wire from each of these sets of wires. You see that? So these are both uh, in left. So this would be the left side of the locomotive. So we're going to strip these wires. Just like that. So now we're going to tape these two together. We're going to call these left. These are left, and then all that's left is the right. These two together. Put these together. 
and call this right. And so what you could do, I sometimes do it, but for the sake of, of the, the installs I do with the equipment I use, um, the, the Keep Alive I use, and the decoder I use, and the speaker I use, you don't have to, but it does give you more breathing room. You can take bigger bigger side cutters than these. You have to use some, some proper wire cutters. You could cut each one of these posts off if you wanted to. It, it does give you more room to breathe, but I've done it both ways. Um, I've done successful installs leaving these, and, uh, and sometimes I cut them. If you if you want to go above and beyond, you can cut them and then use a, a, a Dremel tool to file them flat. That really gives you a lot of extra room. But like I said, for the sake of the, the equipment that I use, the decoder, the Keep Alive, and the speaker, I'm able to get it all fit in there when leaving these in place. But it's up to you if you want to go above and beyond. Um, like I said, that's about all we're going to cover in this video, just how to prepare the locomotive for uh, accepting a decoder. In the next video, we're going to go through and actually uh, wire it all up. Um, so we get it all wired up and, and running. And then I think the fourth, well, the fifth, maybe the fifth part of this series is actually configuring the, the keep alive, or I'm sorry, keep configuring the decoder um, with the sounds I like and, and, and just a little bit of a rundown of how I configure my engines, what bell I use, what whistle I use, what, what settings I use. And then um, I think part five will, will wrap this engine up. Um, Actually, part five, I think I'm also going to, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the pinstripe on this locomotive. I'm also going to remove the lettering of this locomotive. So maybe there'll be six parts to this series. But that is going to do it for this one. It's ready for a decoder, and that's what we're going to be covering in the next one. So uh, thanks for stopping by this short video, and stay tuned for the next one because it's going to be an exciting one. I think the next one might be a, a little bit of a long video, but that's why I kind of wanted to break it up into two parts because then it would be even longer. So... Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part four coming soon. Thanks so much. Bye.